Questions? No electricity after 11. I would cry. 嘿，大家好，我是小姐。大约在一年前，我大学毕业的时候，我上传了一支跟我大学宿舍有关的影片。那那支影片当时在 YouTube 还有 BTBD 上面都获得了不错的反应。因为之后就要去美国念研究所的关系，所以我想趁这个机会提前了解一下美国的大学生活还有宿舍文化到底是怎么样的。今天呢，我就要透过 Cambly 这个英文线上教学平台来采访一下，看看外国老师们对于这支影片的反应还有看法，比较一下东西方在宿舍生活上面的文化差异，同时也可以练一下我的英语口语。在 Cam。上面的他们的师资来自世界各地，有英国、美国、澳洲、南非、欧洲各个地方的都有，可以根据你自己比较喜欢的口音跟文化背景来选择你要的老师。你也可以根据你今天想学的不同的课程类型来选择你想要的课程。因为今天要聊的主题跟文化比较有关系，所以我会在课堂类型里面选择当地文化礼以及习俗这一块，然后我会去找看起来稍微年轻一点老师，这样沟通起来比较不会有代沟。Hello. Hi. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. How are you?、Uh, I'm great, thank you. I'm really good. What's your name?、Uh, I'm Jackson. So, do you mind if I show you a video that I made a year ago? It is originally made in Chinese, but I will mute it and dub it in English so you can understand the narrative. Is that cool、Absolutely. for you? Absolutely.、Okay. Yeah. So I went to college in Beijing, and I graduated a year ago. Before I graduated, I want to do something to celebrate my graduation. So I made a video about my dormitory. All right. Yeah. Beijing. Every time I went back to Taiwan during winter and summer vacations, my family and friends would always ask me, "How's your dormitory? Are you comfortable living there? Did you get used to it?" There are six people living in the same room, and your roommates won't change until you graduate. There's no、oh, bathroom、wow. in each room. What we only have is a public shower room in the building on each floor, but only four showers in the shower room, which were shared by 108 people. <laughs> yeah. In the dormitory, what you need to know is that when six boys living in a room of less than 10 square meters in size. There's only one word that is precise enough to describe it: chaotic. <laughs> Somehow, chaos can eventually become an order. Everyone will develop his own set of rules to live in this tiny space, to make it cozy and unique. In the past four years, except for classes, internships, and hanging out with my friends, I spend most of my time on my bunk bed. In order to create the most comfortable and efficient living space on this bed, which is about only two square meters. I try my best to utilize every walls and every platforms and maximize them for storing and organizing things. In my sky castle, I can do literally everything I want. Two years ago, my roommate took a picture of me. He captured the very moment of me working on the cliffside.、Yeah. Wow, so cool! After living in this dormitory for four years. I'm used to having no electricity and no hot water after 11 every night. Although this dormitory is crowded and a little inconvenient in life, I would still say this is a nice place. After all, it's our home for four years, full of memories. It is totally different than the UK. No electricity after 11. I would cry. Very nice video. I like it. Any thoughts on the video? I went to university as well, so I, I lived in dormitory. And I had a few various、um, different roommates, but but I did not、um, live or live in a place where、um, so many people live. Like you said, six people. Per yeah,、room. we got、so、six people. people. To, to me, that seems very like small space, you know. But very surprised in how crowded your bed was. was like, wow, I've never seen that before.、Yeah. So it's a very nice、uh, use of space and very efficient, I guess.、Um, like you said, it is chaotic、yeah. having that many bodies in one confined space. <laughs> yeah. At, Can possibly create a lot of tension amongst.、So、For sure. You have to learn how to cope and to coexist together. In the UK, I don't think many people would like that. But、mm-hmm. it's very communal. It's very close. Okay. You have to speak to your flatmates. Uh huh. Whereas I get, I guess sometimes in the UK, people might be a bit secluded, so they might sort of shut themselves away from other people. Okay. They might become a bit isolated, but. In that environment, you cannot be isolated. But that's a good thing, I'd say. To have that sort of communal、mm-hmm. atmosphere. I actually studied abroad in mainland China. Oh, really? Wow, <laughs> wow that's really、For、nice to hear. Yeah. One semester. Okay. 
At our university, they had a separate dormitory for the foreigners. Ah, yeah. And, um, Same as so, ours. But I would go look at the, the rooms for my of my friends, and yeah, they were very similar. So more girls in one room with bunk beds, uh -huh. and I think the most surprising thing for me was the fact that electricity was shut off yeah. at yeah, 10 or 11. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to use a flashlight if you want to go to the <laughs> restroom course. or something. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I went to university in Birmingham. The first place I lived was on campus. Yeah. Everyone had their own room. It wasn't very big. Okay. You know, but I had my own room, bathroom, shower. Oh, okay. Um, and then we had a communal kitchen. I've been on several different college campuses. Uh -huh. One similar to yours, but the rooms usually maxes out with around two people. Then there's one of our other do uh, dorm campus. It's like a one living space. You know, you have one living space, but everyone has their own room. You know, if you get upset with someone, you can just go straight to your room, <laughs> have your own little corner. Of yeah. Room. Roughly the size of your all your whole room together will be around the size of one person's bedroom. And I can actually show you my dorm. So there were two people on this side, and then we had a shared kitchen uh -huh. and a shared bathroom, and then two people on this side. Oh. Okay. So it was just four people that I had to share the bathroom and the kitchen with. It looks like an apartment building. Oh. Uh, we had oh. we had a gym in my dorm. What? We had our laundry room. Every floor had like a social space and then chairs and sofas if you wanted to study. Charge okay. your phone. There was a music room if you played instruments. What? If you didn't want to practice in your room. <laughs> That's really thoughtful. <laughs> and then it's our pool table. Cool. If there's like a game, a sporting event, everyone will come to the lobby and watch TV. Yeah, I mean, in my cases, because we're not allowed to choose our own roommates. So we were assigned to live with whomever we were assigned to. The thing is, if you are were assigned to someone you cannot get along with, you have to like put up with him or he has to put up with me for four yeah. years. And that's something we have to find a way to deal with. Maybe we have to okay. set up some rules to uh, co-live with each other. So I was wondering if you have like the similar experiences or uh, maybe like what's your situation? Like how did you treat your roommates or what, do you have any certain rules to live together? Yeah, we had I guess some rules but not really that much honestly. Uh -huh. um, we had rather large space and we were able to like live together in harmony. Uh, honestly, I, I do my homework in one room, he does in another room. He usually would like to watch television a lot. I didn't want to. <laughs> Very different people honestly but at the same time fully able to live together and not really have many rules. Well, the mm -hmm. difference in the UK is it changes every year. So every semester, yeah. you live somewhere different. There's new people coming in, people move and change. And you can choose your roommates. You can live with whoever you want. But in my personal experience, the first year, I didn't choose my flatmates. Uh -huh. But everyone was really nice. You okay. know? Cool. We made nice sure we had rules in terms of who was cleaning the kitchen. Let's say I cooked the meal. Yeah. I had to clean the kitchen. There's no misunderstanding. Um, I think it's just mutual respect. Normally, because they have a room to themselves, so oh. usually it's the living quarters, or maybe they would have a bathroom schedule. So if okay. you want to have a shower, say, okay, every morning I will have a shower at 7 a.m. The next person, 7.30. Oh, okay. So they might do that. But in terms of in terms of respect, I think it's it's down to what, what you've been taught as a child. So yeah. you know, you, you don't fight, you you are polite to people, you're courteous, mm -hmm. um, and you clean up after yourself. So my freshman year was actually kinda crazy and one of the girls, she oh. was just a very, very mean person. She would come back home at three or four AM on like oh. a Wednesday night, blackout drunk. She would oh. purposely leave her keys uh -huh. at the dormitory so she wouldn't lose them and have to pay five hundred dollars for new keys. So at three AM she would boom 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 wake us up so we could let her in. Okay. That must be awful. Oh god, I hated her so much. <laughs> in my dormitory we have to try our best to respect each other because we have to see each other's face every day. So we don't oh, want yeah. any unpleasant things to happen. If anything happens we have to like kind of tolerate it and just just let it go, let it be. Yeah. yeah. I do feel that uh, your situation will be better to creating a more, a stronger bond. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, after they graduate college, they don't talk to the people. Yeah. Because every year or every semester, mm -hmm. it could be different. There's no set for, oh, these are us for four years. You do fight a lot or something about well, like certain said, things. There's always, you know, complications. <laughs> <laughs> ah, a term we use here in the, mm -hmm. uh, in the Western is, 
we, they call first world problems. Okay. Meaning they're not real problems. You're just really just creating an argument for nothing. Sometimes first world problems can grow into a bigger argument to where it's like both slamming their doors, going to the quarters and not talking. Yeah. You guys are forced in a very small, confined space. Yeah. That's an interesting for viewpoint. For four years, you have to become greater than yourself to be able to handle a small space with six people every single day. That's a lot of tensions. If two people are arguing, you have four other people that's going to try their best to get you mm -hmm. guys to stop. Mm -hmm. In Western countries, no. If I don't yeah. want to talk to you, I never have to. Bye. Yeah. 跟这些老师聊完之后呢，我觉得东西方大学里面的宿舍生活、宿舍文化是有相处模式，存在很多有趣的差异。刚好今天透过 Cambly 这个平台，我不仅可以跟外国老师们聊一些好玩的话题，体验一些 cultural shock， 也可以同时训练自己的英文。我觉得今天这个平台的重点在于它提供给你一个全英文的环境跟氛围，让你可以。非常好的融入在一个英语对话的过程之中，学习一门语言，我觉得最重要就是你要能够持续的去使用它。在这个平台上，你就可以每天挑出一点时间来训练自己的英语口语，上课时间也非常灵活。如果你也想要拥有这样可以跟外国老师聊天、交谈、训练自己英文口语的机会，我已经把 Cambly 他们平台连接放在下面，有兴趣的记得点开看看，并且记得要用我的推荐码 Jackson 二零二零，你就可以拿到十五分钟的免费体验课程。以上就是今天影片，如果喜欢这支影片的话，记得帮我按个喜欢；更喜欢的话，记得分享这支影片或是订阅我的频道。就这样，我是小姐，我们下次见，拜喽。在聊天的时候呢，有两个老师是来自英国的，他们都不约而同地提到了英国大学生的喝酒文化跟派对文化，我觉得还挺有趣的，所以就在最后分享给你们看。The university life in England is probably eighty percent party, oh really? Percent study, yes. Okay. It's a huge culture. It's kind of completely different, and it means people are more laid back. When I would go to my friends' dormitories, they They would always have a party. The main lesson was socializing, so we'd be meeting new people in the UK.、Okay. Yeah, there's something called Freshers' Week.、Mm -hmm. So、yeah. before you start、mm -hmm. studying, before lectures start, yeah, there's a week before where there are parties, social events. During that week, you don't have to study. Uh -huh. You're just partying and meeting people. Yeah, I think the the school are really considerate about it because, like, we have to. Make friends first. I think、uh -huh. this is a uniquely British thing. It's absolutely crazy. What's your YouTube channel called? Is it called Jackson Jean? Yeah, yeah. You you can search Jackson Jean on YouTube, but I don't think you'll find my channel because all you have will be Michael Jackson's Billie Jean.、Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>